All right, in this episode, this is episode three of Intake Manifold. Uh, we're gonna try to get the plenum welded onto the runners and then everything has to get sent away for coating. So we're not gonna get it all done in this episode. So I'm actually gonna add in an extra little bits and pieces of things that I'm doing, specifically uh, a little bit of the wiring. So it's gonna be a mix and match episode. Uh, anyway, um, stay tuned. Oh, I'm sorry for taking so long to get this video out, folks, but uh, it's not that I haven't been busy in the garage. I've just been so busy at work that I haven't really had time to sit down and, and get the videos put together. So uh, whatever uh, time I get in the garage is uh, important for my mental health at this time. So <laughs> we're doing what we can. So there's my little three inch DA and we're just getting those edges where I've had to fill the, the gap between the two parts, uh, getting those sanded out and then I'm wet sanding the whole thing. There was a little ridge on the part line really no big deal just kind of knock those things off and get this part ready it'll get cleared in the end so i'd like to make sure that everything in here is uh is done up as nice and as tidily as i can uh, and then we move on to getting the rest of this crazy manifold built so uh, when i got this piece cnc machined getting the holes drilled and tapped seemed to be a fairly expensive part of the process i really couldn't work out why it's just running a tap into it so i got my tap so it's just one eighth npt taps going in there there's five ports that do various vacuum signaling and other other pieces that are needed into that intake manifold so uh, just a quick buzz there and get those done and then we move on to the fuel rail. So this is the stock Volvo fuel rail and I need an adapter to get the fuel into and out of this rail. So we sort of uh, plugged away with that and then drilled up the holes for that uh, particular adapter, exactly the size of the hole that I needed. And well, that didn't work when I was drilling the holes to try to get this adapter, right? Which needed that hole to fit in. So I could get fuel in and out of the rail. Uh, I thought I was going to get away with it, but as you can see, uh, I've gone right through the edge on one side. A uh, pretty accurate hole, actually, and just nipped the side of the other side. Okay, so I've taken a perfectly good fuel rail and turned that into scrap. Uh, yay me. Uh, but sitting in the back corner all along. I uh, have fuel rail material. This is standard race car and six stuff. Uh, and I have the tap and I have the drill. So now we'll just, you know, take that small disaster and turn it into an opportunity. We'll build the fuel rail. Uh, the only hard part is I lose the connection points, but many, uh, many years ago with the fuel rail, I bought the CNC machined. Uh, brackets that go with the fuel rail it's just that the mount foot of course has to be pointing the wrong way so I am going to have to cut them turn it around the other way and weld it back on uh, <laughs> I mean honestly I, I don't actually try to make drama drama just happens in the garage it's a thing okay so this is all just trying to get the rest of this manifold built so uh, stop talking and get back to work Okay, so the first step in making a fuel rail, not that I've made very many of them, but it's to get all the measurements right. So you've got to, you know, I don't know, I mean, does it matter? There's enough movement in a fuel injector that you can probably be a little bit sloppy with this, but, you know, I'm retentive enough that that's not going to happen. So uh, we're taking all the measurements from one end of the fuel rail. Okay, so then I'm just, you know, are, are the spacings all the same? Yeah, they're the same. So then you just take all the measurements from one end and I'm setting this all up so that I can go over to my surface plate with my height gauge and lay this all out in one go. So there we are. I've got it parallel then. I've got some, uh, those are two, four, six blocks. So they're big machinist blocks. I've blued the whole thing. And if you've never used a height gauge, like trying to lay out a fuel rail is, is not really the hardest thing in the world to do. But um, boy, this, that, particular set of tools just makes that a whole lot easier and I now know where the ins and outs are going to go on the fuel rail right so it'd be a little bit more conventional with an in on one side and an out uh, somewhere in the middle of the rail uh, and that's all going to be worked out relative to where everything fits in the car right so you've got to actually sit down and do that um, anyway those that aren't you know full-time machinists uh, you'll probably notice me doing a few things here that you know maybe you don't do one is that spinning of the drill backwards to center on the hole uh, I've drilled a pilot hole 
And get yourself a set of stubby drill bits. Like, don't be using jobber length drill bits all the time. They bend, they move. <laughs> Stubbies don't. So it's just a little uh, advice there if you're, you know, investing in some of these tools. Anyways, that's a special drill bit that's made specifically for drilling these injector ports. And it has to be uh, turned quite slowly, actually, to make the whole thing work. And with that done, then you cut it. Don't cut it before. Uh, I always just leave it long and then I cut everything at the end. And I'm just using a regular, this is my 12 inch uh, chop saw with an aluminum, this a non-ferrous metal cutting blade. So there's really, um, I don't know, some people didn't know that you can cut aluminum with uh, woodworking tools, but there's lots of wood that's harder than the aluminum. Anyway, so now we're down to the brackets. You can see there on the, uh, the mount that goes onto the head that there's some there's some bosses there that I'm trying to pick up. Uh, and then I'm getting everything else drilled and tapped. So there's, uh, uh, these are all AN, so they're like 9 16 uh, fine threaded, I think is the tap, something like that. Anyways, it doesn't matter. If you're doing it, you'll figure it out. Uh, clamps go on, everything goes on. I've tried it, I left the, the plenum mock-up piece all together in order that I fit it into the car and make sure that everything is going to work. Such a pain. All right, so far so good with the fuel rail. I've got everything drilled and tapped for inlets, outlets, uh, as well as just a cap for the end port. Uh, I also modified these brackets, which you saw, I just didn't show the welding. That's uh, kind of boring. So anyway, there's the bracket holding everything down. I just need to drill and tap the holes uh, to join it in. And then of course we found a new uh, a new little wrinkle in the plan, which is uh, I've been fabricating everything this way, right? <laughs> it's the easiest way to hold it. Um, if I take my little third hand tool off and turn it around, you can now see a new little wrinkle, uh, which is the edge of the injector is uh, really very, very close to the fuel rail. Like I can get the fitting in but it's kind of too tight. Now, I just put those injectors in the middle of the rail. What do I know? Uh, <laughs> I guess that's not right or something. Uh, I'm just gonna come in with the router and machine a little slot for each one of the injectors so that I can get that in real nicely. All right, with that figured out, we're gonna get the runners welded on and then we'll get all the plenum parts done. So, uh, all right, keep right, let's keep going. All right, again with the woodworking tools. Uh, so I've just marked off the area there where I need to trim and I've got a little trim router. I think it was a $30 thing and it's got a plastic base and it probably will kill me one day, but I've been using that particular little tool to trim aluminum for maybe a decade. Uh, I should probably invest in a higher quality tool, but there you go. Uh, now I need a big piece of C-channel here. I had some in, in stock and I'm just going to be bolting the entire plenum down uh, to try to keep everything flat when I go ahead to weld all of this stuff together. So I'm just cleaning and tidying it up and there you can see we're now we're now ready to go. Now the top of this, uh, the, the manifold uh, part with the injector bosses in it, it's just a cast piece so it's a little rough. Now the casting's actually, uh, I've welded this kind of casting before and it welds pretty nicely but um, there's no porosity in it. Volvo makes the casting, it's really high quality. So just going in and cleaning all this stuff up, you can't weld through the uh, the aluminum oxide, so it's uh, it's a pain. So the cleaner you get it before you weld, the better off you are. So I'm just gonna finish the little bit of port work there, make sure that's nice and neat and tidy. And then I've gotta go and put a good big weld prep chamfer on the ends of those uh, tubes in order that I can get this thing welded on. All right, so um, I actually lost a little bit of footage of the weld process itself, but here I'm going and trimming up the runners. Uh, I know the exact length I need from my mock-up. So back to the saw, hammering through those things. And they're like plus or minus a few thou when I got them done. I was impressed with, with that. Just a you know little block of wood. Be careful though, right? Um, anyway, now I'm going to put the chamfer on them. Again, there's more than one pass here. I'm just showing you one. All right, so uh, while well, we're getting ready to roll here, there's one last little detail. So the, the thermostat housing that's in the car right now is sort of the standard one uh, that comes with most of these things, and it kind of points out towards the runner. 
uh, and I'm a little bit worried that the sensor, the temperature sensor, is sitting kind of right where the runner wants to be, and there is another style, and the other style points basically straight up, puts the sensor in a much better place, uh, and with the exception of it hitting the side here, the manifold hits the side, so I just have to trim a big fat boss off the side of the manifold, so I'm going to whip uh, this part onto the engine right away while I'm welding actually and uh, we're going to get it fitted up so everything works. Okay so I missed the footage of me tacking this all together and even when I was tacking I could tell something was going wrong. It was so thick that the top of the uh, plenum was not welding. I just could not get it welded. It was such a massive heat sink. Anyways, I did preheat, so you got the propane torch out. I've only got a 200 amp machine, and quite honestly, folks, I was defeated. It was not going to be the kind of quality that I needed. So I ended up having to take this into a, a shop and have a real welder do it for me, which is just terrible. A eh, 300 amp machine, what are you gonna do? Anyway, so um, while the weather's good, we ran out to the junkyard and got a wiring harness. Yeah, I'm not going to use this wiring harness and I'm going to explain to you why later when I actually start covering the wiring of the car. But it's uh, it's just a good practice to get an existing wiring harness, which I never did have for this particular project, and uh, get everything mapped out, right? Like I'm, I'm just, you know, I've got the computer open, I'm getting all the sensors, I'm getting all the wire gauges, I'm getting all the wire colors. I'm just building a database of what's going to be needed to get the engine side wiring harness done up for this car. So every little detail, including just, you know, where does it go, laying it in, making sure I've got the right brackets, making sure things are gonna lay out the way I need them. Some of the wiring is different, Different between the car I took this wire from and how it's going to lay out in this particular car. So just getting it going, but hey, progress, all progress is good progress. Okay, so that's a wrap on that one. The uh, intake manifold is now with the real welder. Uh, they've got a much bigger machine than I do and they're going to be able to get that welded up. In fact, uh, I've just got noticed that it's done. So now it's gone off for ceramic coating. Again, every time I have to farm parts out in order to get them finished, I can just count. It's almost like it's gonna be at least a month or a month and a half before I can get those parts back here and get them in. You have to get into the queue uh, and then your parts eventually uh, get uh, sent off and, and get done. Anyway, so that's it for now. Uh, everything on the wiring is in. I've sorted out all the connectors, all of the various bits of silliness that is a Volvo wiring harness. Those things are all done, all the way down to figuring out the rubber boots. So I've got a massive database of information that I've collected there. Uh, we're not gonna be wiring this car until uh, quite a ways into the future, but there were a number of things. One of them in Canada is the season. Uh, so while the junkyards are still open and while the temperature is still not diabolically cold, we tend to get things done. So I might shift this out of phase from where you might do it, but then your weather might be a whole lot nicer than mine. Anyway, um, thanks for stopping by and tuning in. I do appreciate that. And uh, stay safe and we'll catch you on the next episode.